Hello and welcome. I am Vishal Dahiya and you're watching News Tonight. Now, before we begin with the headlines, Rajya Sabha TV would like to make an appeal to all its viewers to stay safe from COVID-19 pandemic. Remember to wear a face mask and wash your hands and face regularly. Ensure that you maintain physical distancing whenever you are stepping outside. And these simple precautions are all it takes to defeat the pandemic. Let's now take a look at the headlines. At Niti Ayo Governing Council meet, Prime Minister Modi urges close cooperation between centre and states to boost economic growth, asserts private sector should get full opportunity in Atmanirbhar Bharat campaign. Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu calls on members of parliament to actively promote native languages, emphasizes communication and outreach programs to prevent extinction of languages and loss of precious legacy. Instant food means constant disease. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu advises youth to adopt healthy lifestyles Avoid sedentary living and junk food. Cautions against increased incidence of non-communicable diseases in India. India and China hold COP commanders talks on next phase of disengagement. Both sides working towards de-escalation from friction points including Gogra, Hot Springs and Beipsang Plains. External Affairs Minister Jai Shankar hands over 1 lakh additional doses of COVID vaccine to Maldives government. Vaccinations against virus cross 1.8 crore in India. Let's now take a look at all the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Saturday chaired the sixth meeting of Governing Council of Niti Aayog via video conferencing. The agenda of the meeting included agriculture, infrastructure, service delivery at grassroots level and health and nutrition, among others. Prime Minister Narendra Modi discussed the National Development Agenda with State Chief Ministers on Saturday. Addressing the Governing Council meeting of Niti Aayog, he underscored the need for centre and states to work together and make cooperative federalism more meaningful. कॉम्पिटिटिव कोऑपरेटिव फेडरलिज्म को न सिर्फ राज्यों के बीच डिस्ट्रिक्ट तक ले जाना है ताकि विकास की स्पर्धा निरंतर चलती रहे हमने कोरोना कालखंड में देखा है कि कैसे अब राज्य और केंद्र सरकार ने मिलकर काम किया देश सफल हुआ और दुनिया में भी भारत की एक अच्छी छवि निर्माण हुई। The Prime Minister pointed out that India has a holistic approach in various fields from agriculture to animal husbandry and fisheries. As a result, he said India's agricultural exports increased significantly even during the COVID pandemic. साथियों बीते वर्षों में कृषि से लेकर पशुपालन और मत्स्य पालन तक एक होलिस्टिक अप्रोच अपनाई गई है इसका परिणाम है कि कोरोना के दौर में भी देश में कृषि निर्यात में काफी बढ़ोतरी हुई है लेकिन हमारा पोटेंशियल इससे अनेक गुना ज्यादा है हमारे प्रोडक्ट्स का वेस्टेज कम से कम हो इसके लिए स्टोरेज और प्रोसेसिंग पर भी ध्यान देने की जरूरत है और उसमें इन्वेस्टमेंट के लिए हमें the Prime Minister urged the states to take advantage of the production-linked incentive schemes that the centre introduced for various sectors. केंद्र सरकार ने विभिन्न सेक्टर्स के लिए एक पीएलआई स्कीम शुरू की है। ये देश में मैन्युफैक्चरिंग बढ़ाने का बेहतरीन अवसर है। राज्यों को भी इस स्कीम का पूरा लाभ लेते हुए अपने यहाँ ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा निवेश आकर्षित करना चाहिए, 
कॉरपोरेट टैक्स की दरें कम करने का लाभ भी राज्यों ने बढ़ चढ़ करके उठाना चाहिए He also renewed his pitch for a self-reliant nation that not only fulfills its own needs but also caters to the requirements of the people across the world. Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan ek aise Bharat ka nirman ka marg hai jo na keval apni avashyaktaon ke liye balki vishva ke liye bhi utpadan kare aur ye utpadan विश्व श्रेष्ठता की कसौटी पर भी खरा उतरे और इसलिए मैं हमेशा कहता हूं जीरो डिफेक्ट जीरो इफेक्ट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर एम्फोसाइज द नीड टू प्रमोट इनोवेशन एंड यूज टेक्नोलॉजी ही सेट द प्राइवेट सेक्टर मस्ट बी अलाउड टू ग्रो एंड द स्टेट्स एंड सेंटर शुड बोथ सपोर्ट देम विद इनपुट्स फ्रॉम रविंद्र शरोन ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी The Niti Aayog CEO Amitabh Kant said that the sixth meeting of Governing Council of Niti Aayog was extremely constructive. Addressing a press conference after the meeting, Kant said that states appreciated the reform agenda, which has been accelerated by the government. The sixth Governing Council meeting was attended by chief ministers, lieutenant governors, and administrators. Niti Aayog Vice Chairman Rajiv Kumar said that India's fight against COVID-19. has seen a united front which is a perfect example of cooperative federalism and this had uh, six uh, items uh, that were focused upon um, one was making india a manufacturing powerhouse uh, second was reimagining agriculture third was improving the physical infrastructure fourth accelerating human resource development uh, fifth improving service delivery at the grassroots level and the health and nutrition these were the six and uh, at the meeting today uh, the prime minister in his opening remarks emphasized uh, the importance of cooperative federalism in the foundation as a foundation of india's progress i mean he pointed to the fight against covid-19 which was achieved successfully because of this cooperation he urged the state governments uh, to uh, to give the opportunities for the private sector and the private investor to take more in increasing part in the in aap nirbhar bharat uh, you know uh, sort of drive that we have uh, he emphasized this strengthening of the msmes and startups if you look at this uh, the focus was on ease of doing business and ease of living as the prime minister said but if you look at the agenda item they were all very very developmental in nature from manufacturing to agriculture reimagining agriculture and to physical infrastructure to human resources and health and uh, you know the objective uh, and really about service delivery at the grassroots level so the objective was to make states complete partner not merely states but also districts complete partners so this one alignment across the country and drive it and therefore i really thought that today's uh, uh, meeting was extremely uh, constructive very very positive and a lot of states appreciated uh, the reform agenda which has been accelerated the prime minister narendra modi will visit assam and west bengal on 22nd of february he will dedicate important projects of the oil and gas sector to the nation in an event organized at uh, silapatha in dhemaji assam the prime minister will also inaugurate the dhemaji engineering college and lady foundation stone for swalkuchi engineering college he will inaugurate several railway projects in hugli west bengal the extension of metro railway from noapara to dakshineshwar will be inaugurated this 4.1 km extension has been constructed at a cost of 464 crore rupees prime minister will also inaugurate the third line between kalaikunda and jhargram over a stretch of 30 km of the 132 km long Kharagpur Adityapur which was sanctioned with an estimated cost of 1312 crore rupees and these projects will ensure better operational fluidity less journey time and enhance safety of train operations as well as boost the overall economic growth of the region Ahead of the International Mother Languages Day on 21st February, Vice President and Chairman of Rajya Sabha M Venkaiah Naidu has written to all the members of Parliament to actively contribute to the cause of preservation and promotion 
of Indian languages. He urged all MPs to be active facilitators in promoting native languages in the large areas they represent and to start with by taking up appropriate communication and outreach programs on the occasion of International Mother Languages Day. He said that the first learned and spoken mother language is the soul of life. In his three-page letters to all the members of Parliament, Chairman Naidu writes, and I quote, With a multiplicity of languages and a rich spectrum of dialects, we have regions which are repositories of ancient knowledge, much of which stands in peril today. This is mainly due to a mindset of looking down upon one's mother tongue and wearing the linguistic badge of competence in English as a false sign of superiority. This attitude, bordering on disdain for the mother tongue, needs to change. Mahatma Gandhi had, with characteristic foresight, warned that if English educated neglect, as they have done, and even now continue, as some do, to be ignorant of mother tongue, linguistic starvation will abide. Unquote. Chairman Naidu also stressed on the need for promoting native languages for preserving the country's rich cultural diversity. He said, and I quote, Culture and language are two sides of the same coin. They embody rich knowledge and practices accumulated over a long period of time. Extinction of a language results in the loss of legacy. We cannot allow this to happen. We take pride in India being a mosaic of several languages and cultures, epitomizing unity in diversity. This applies to the world as well, which is emerging as a global village. The richness of diverse cultures can only be preserved through promotion of mother languages. Bureau report, Radha Sabha TV. Vice President M. Venkaiya Naidu has said that the use of mother tongue should be increased in administration as it helps in connecting with people. In his article published in newspaper dailies on Saturday, Venkaiya Naidu highlighted the importance of mother tongue in our lives. He said that mother tongue is critically important for cognitive, psychological and personality development, education and learning. Naidu said second language learning at an appropriate stage opens a window to the world and promotes open minds, better understanding of others, peace and harmony. He said multilingualism has definite advantages in the multicultural, diverse and competitive global order. Vice President M. Venkaiya Naidu visited the Centre for DNA Fingerprinting and Diagnostics, that is CDFD, in Hyderabad on Saturday. Addressing the scientists, the Vice President called for collective effort to promote healthy lifestyle among the people. He also inaugurated Pediatric Rare Genetic Disorders Laboratory at CDFD. Here is a detailed report. Vice President M. Venkaiya Naidu called upon people, particularly the youth, to adopt healthy lifestyle. He asked them to avoid sedentary living and junk food in view of the growing incident of non-communicable disease in the country. The Vice President stressed the need to promote organic farming, revisit our traditional food habits and promote consumption of protein-rich food for better health outcomes. Cautioning against fat for instant food, the Vice President quipped, instant food means constant disease. Sedentary lifestyle is causing so much harm to the society. Sedentary lifestyle and unhealthy food habits are linked to the increased incidence of non-communicable disease in the country. This is also equally important. So lifestyle changes that have come in between, we should avoid and go back to our original lifestyle. Referring to burden of genetic diseases, the Vice President asked scientists to develop simpler and cost-effective methods for diagnosis of various genetic diseases for help in better patient management. Technology, of any technology or any research, ultimate aim is to make people's life more comfortable. To continue to work developing new technologies for better, simpler and cost-effective methods for diagnosis of various genetic diseases. This would help in better patient management. The Vice President also lauded Centre for identifying novel genetic mutations for more than 10 disorders in India, 
including identification of four new genes, which would be helpful in genetic counseling and management of diseases. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. Let's now take a new look at some news from Parliament. Now, the Parliamentary Committee on Education, Women, Children, Youth and Sports emerged as the best performer of the eight committees serviced by Rajya Sabha since September 2017. The committee is headed by Rajya Sabha member Dr. Vinay Sahastabuddhai. Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu has repeatedly urged the members to ensure effective functioning of the committees. The Committee on Education, Women, Children, Youth and Sports emerged as the best performer of the eight committees of Rajya Sabha since September 2017, with an average attendance of 54.19% and the average meeting duration of 2 hours 20 minutes for the 50 meetings held during this period. उल्लिखित भी किया और सदस्यों का अभिनंदन भी किया और मैं मानता हूं कि अगर हमारी समिति ने अगर अच्छा काम किया है तो उसका श्रेय हमारे माननीय सदस्यों को है मेरे पूर्ववर्ती अध्यक्ष जो 2017 से विगत सितंबर तक इस कमेटी का नेतृत्व कर रहे थे अध्यक्ष का दायित्व निभा रहे थे डॉक्टर the panel presented reports in Ministry of Education and Ministry of Women and Child Development in 2021. It also presented a report on preparation for Olympic Games. In this committee, I have seen that all the members participate very proactively and provide suggestions which are very meaningful, incisive and provides tremendous perspective. I also take this opportunity to thank the various ministries and the officials who work along with this committee in a very meaningful and purposeful way. Let's take a short break here, but stay tuned. On the other side, we'll bring you some more news. Prolific British poet and story writer Joseph Rudyard Kipling, one of the first masters of short stories in English. In 1894 appeared his Jungle Book, which became a children's classic all over the world. Kim, the story of Kimball O'Hara and his adventures in the Himalayas, is perhaps his most felicitous work published. Set in and concerned with India, he had come to know and love so well. In 1907, Kipling became the first English language writer to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. हमारा आज का सवाल था कि कौन सा कार्य राष्ट्रीय अनुसूचित जाति आयोग की परिधि में नहीं है? आपके विकल्प थे ए अनुसूचित जातियों को संवैधानिक संरक्षण प्रदान करना बी अनुसूचित जातियों के हितों का उल्लंघन करने वाले मामलों की जांच करना सी अनुसूचित जातियों के संरक्षण से संबंधित रिपोर्ट प्रधानमंत्री को प्रस्तुत करना और डी इनमें से कोई भी नहीं सही जवाब है सी अनुसूचित जातियों के संरक्षण से संबंधित रिपोर्ट प्रधानमंत्री को प्रस्तुत करना Welcome back. You're watching News Tonight. In some more news ahead of the upcoming assembly polls in West Bengal, a total of 125 companies of central forces will be deployed in the state by 25th of February. 60 companies of CRPF, 25 companies of BSF, 30 companies of SSB and 5 companies each of CISF and ITBP will be sent to the state. 12 companies of Central Forces have already reached the state. State police and senior officials of the district administration will be assisting the Central Forces. Elections to the 294-member West Bengal Assembly is due in April, May. India and China on Saturday held the 10th round of talks between the senior military commanders. 
The talks come two days after the completion of disengagement between Chinese and Indian militaries in eastern Ladakh's uh, Pingongso area. The meeting was held at the Moldo border point on the Chinese side of the line of actual control. The focus of talks is on carrying forward the disengagement process. The Indian delegation was led by Lieutenant General P.G.K. Menon and commander of the Lei-based 14 Corps. The Chinese side is headed by Major General Liu Lin, the commander of the South Xinjiang Military District of the People's Liberation Army, that is PLA. The focus areas of these talks are outstanding problems with PLA at Depsang, Hot Springs and Gogra in eastern Ladakh. External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar handed over 1 lakh additional doses of COVID vaccine to Maldives. S.J. Shankar handed over the vaccines to Maldives Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid and Health Minister Ahmed Naseem. He also held comprehensive talks with the Maldivian Foreign Minister. The two leaders held discussion on close cooperation during COVID and post-pandemic economic recovery. He also witnessed the exchange of agreements on a wide range of domains including fish processing, public broadcasting, sustainable urban development, road infrastructure and housing. Chai Shankar also joined Speaker Mohammad Nasheed, Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid and Sports Minister Ahmed Mahlouf at the Ikwani Stadium where a modern running track and playground has been built with India's assistance. During the visit, he will also meet Maldives President Ibrahim Mohammad Saleh. More than 10,300 COVID patients recovered in the last 24 hours, taking the total number of recoveries to 1.06 crores. India has a tally of over 1 crore 9,77,000 COVID-19 cases. 13,993 new infections were reported in the last 24 hours. Total deaths have gone up, have gone up to nearly 1.56 lakh with 101 new deaths in the last 24 hours. Active caseload stands at 1,43,127. India's recovery rate stands at an impressive 97.27%, which is amongst the highest in the world. Maharashtra continues to report the highest daily new cases at 6,112. It is followed by Kerala with 4,505 new cases, while Tamil Nadu reported 448 new cases. A total of 1 crore 8,38,323 vaccinations against COVID-19 have been conducted so far. The vaccination for the frontline workers has been 36,11,670 till date. The first dose coverage of uh, the healthcare workers. There are 12 states and union territories which have carried out more than 75% of their target under this category. These include Bihar with 85%, Tripura with 83.2% coverage, Odisha with 82%, Lakshdweep with 81%, Gujarat with 807 Chhattisgarh with 80.0, Madhya Pradesh with 77.7%, Uttarakhand with 77.4, Jharkhand with 76.1, Uttar Pradesh with 76%, Rajasthan with 75.8% and Himachal Pradesh with 75.6%. The World Day of Social Justice is being observed globally on Saturday. Now, the day emphasizes on the need to promote social justice and focus on areas such as poverty, exclusion, gender equality, unemployment, human rights among others. The theme of World Day of Social Justice 2021 is a call for social justice in the digital economy. In a Twitter message, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu urged for protection of human rights of all. He asked for collective efforts to eliminate poverty, literacy and illiteracy and discrimination, which are hurdles in a just society's path. The 20th February marks the Statehood Day for Arunachal Pradesh and Mizoram. President Ramnath Kovind, 
Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi extended greetings to the people of Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh on this occasion. President Kovind said the country is proud of the vibrant Mizo culture. He urged people to celebrate the statehood day with the same zeal that marks Chapchakut, Mimkut and uh, Taifnud festivals. President appreciated the natural beauty of Arunachal Pradesh and said that its cultural landscape has one of the world's richest diversities of ethnic tribal groups and languages. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu said exotic culture, rich heritage, natural beauty and artistic grandeur make Arunachal Pradesh truly special. Vice President reiterated that Mizoram is known for its pristine beauty, colourful festivals and breathtaking waterfalls. Prime Minister Narendra Modi tweeted that the entire nation is proud of the great Mizo culture. He said that the people of Mizoram are known for their kindness and commitment towards living in harmony with nature. PM Modi said the people of Arunachal Pradesh are known for their culture, courage and strong commitment to India's development. He wished that both the states scale new heights of progress in future. That's all we have in the bulletin. But before we leave you, let me remind once again to stay safe from the coronavirus pandemic. Remember to wear a face mask, wash your hands and face regularly and ensure that you maintain physical distancing whenever you're stepping outside. These three simple precautions are all it takes to defeat the pandemic.